So here we are, Saturday morning, June 3rd, at the March for Truth. What does that mean in America today? March for Truth, we're looking for transparency in our government, accountability. We want to know why our president is uh, more friendly to Vladimir Putin and our nation sitting on edge for a Putin interview. Um, we'd like some tax information and um, we're getting tired of the lies. Okay, and you are? My name is Kristen Thomas. I'm with Rise Up Western Mass Indivisible. Thanks. And you brought someone with you today. I did. And who is this? I'm her daughter. I'm Claire Thomas. And your name is? Claire Thomas. Good. Glad to see you both. I'm Cindy Sank from Springfield, uh -huh. Mass. And um, I'm here today with this group as well, um, Indivisible Western Mass. And I feel it's important um, after the inauguration of the day after I did go to D.C. for the Women's March. And uh -huh. I think it's really important to keep energized and aware and really vigilant as to what's happening in this country now and just speak up when you think things are not the way you think they should be. I think it's important. So I'm here as a grandmother for my daughter, my granddaughter. I just think it's really key that we stay united and vocal. So thank you. So these are our two Code Pink sisters. Um, so give me your name and what you're doing here. I'm Ellen Graves, G-R-A-V-E-S. Um, I'm here to say that the truth needs to be told and Code Pink is there to tell it. All right, thank you. And you are? I'm Priscilla. And um, I am here to march for truth because the truth will set us free. And um, our banner says austerity is a scam because all that talk about not having money for not having money for social services or the things, infrastructure things we need is really a scam. They're just spending it all on bombs and then feeding their need for bombs. So, and giving it to the Saudis and giving it to the Israelis. I want them to stop giving my money away for those terrible, terrible things and use it for really good things. And they could do good things for the Saudis and the Israelis if they wanted to. <laughs> My name is Denise Baudet, and I am an artist and resistor here today. Okay, and this is the uh, March for Truth? This is, the March for, this is a March for Truth, and we are here to uh, speak for all the little critters, too, who, who can't be here to march with us. So we're here with our banner. <laughs> yep, in honor and resistance. Thank you. And you are? I am Natalie Lewis, and I'm here as well, marching for resistance and for truth and for our planet. Liar, liar, pants on fire! Liar, liar, pants on fire! Liar, liar, pants on fire! This is what democracy looks like! This is what democracy looks like! This is what democracy looks like. Show me what democracy looks like. This is what democracy looks like. This is what democracy looks like. This is what Great turnout. No, Chelsea Kim. Hey, Pat. Hey. Chant, chant, chant. Chant. 
<laughs> Tell me what democracy looks like. This is yeah. what democracy looks like. Tell me what democracy looks like. This is what democracy looks like. Show me what democracy looks like. This is what democracy looks like. Tell me what democracy looks like. This is what democracy looks like. Hi, Becky. Hi. Good morning. Hi, good morning. Good to see you. If the president was elected, even in part due to collusion with a foreign effort to interfere with our democratic process, then the will of the people has been subverted. Why did I put this march together? There are important unanswered questions about the legitimacy of the last election. Trump's connection to Russia and his close relationship with Putin, Trump's taxes, properties, and businesses. We know that the Russians interfered with our election. Trump and his associates possibly colluded with the Russians to win the election. We need to know what the Russians have on Trump, his family, and many of the people he has working with him. Why did a billionaire want to give up his lavish lifestyle to take on one of the hardest jobs and expose himself to constant scrutiny and ridicule? Where did he get his money from in 2008 after going bankrupt when others were losing everything? What is he hiding in his tax returns? Huh. We need to continue to speak up and let the politicians who aren't doing their job know that their jobs are at risk in 2018. Yeah. We are all very lucky to live in our little bubble in Northampton, but we are here to fight for everyone else out there. We don't have a president who is looking out for our best interests and our safety, so each and every one of us needs to speak up and demand the truth. The GOP is putting party before country. All they want to do is make money on the backs of the working people. Trump, Jared, and the rest of them are too dumb to know how deep they are in it with Russia. They are playing a very dangerous game and putting us all at risk. We need to know the truth about Trump's taxes, Russia dealings and businesses, and we need to know now. We need to know how far reaching this web is going, who is involved, and what they are getting out of it. That's why there are 130 plus cities marching throughout the country and the world today, demanding to know the truth. Investigation is expanding. We must keep the pressure on. Yes, yes. All right. So we have a great lineup of speakers today. Um, the first one is Jennifer Taub. Jennifer is the Northampton resident and a professor at Vermont Law School. Her tweet proposing a tax march on the day after the women's march turned into a movement overnight. Oh, yes. She was on the executive committee of the tax march and helped plan the Washington, D.C. event. The March 15 protests drew more than 120,000 people nationwide. Okay, Jennifer, thanks for coming out today. Good afternoon, Northampton. So, first, thank you so much, Debbie and Indivisible NoHo. It's great to be here. This is my fifth March of the year. Who was at a women's march? Woo! Who was at a tax march? Woo! Science march? Woo! Climate march? Woo! Oh yes. Now, why do we have to march for truth? Think about it. So what are we doing here? We've, we're here for four reasons. I'm going to go through each of them. So the first is we want an independent, 
bipartisan commission to investigate Trump Russia. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. And when I say that, I think it's really important to talk not just about what that commission needs to investigate, but why it's needed. And just to be absolutely clear, this is common when there's a big scandal or problem. We don't just rely on a special counsel. And by the way, that's a victory that we got a special counsel. So, yay! We don't just rely on a special counsel. We don't just rely on very important congressional committees. But traditionally, when there's an event like this, we need an independent, bipartisan commission. So think 9-11, think the Financial Crisis Inquiry Commission. The way it happens is Congress passes a law that creates this bipartisan commission. It's made up not of government officials, but of ordinary people who are experts. They're given subpoena power, and they have they interview witnesses. They hold public hearings that are televised. They publish thousands of pages of primary documents online for all of us and for researchers to see. And at the culmination of the investigation, they publish a report. This is a long-standing tradition, and it should continue. So we need that independent bipartisan commission now. We know where there's smoke, there's fire. We have known for many, many months that there was Russian interference in the 2016 presidential election, period. That is a fact. Not fake news, that's a fact. We also know, and we've known, that there are many links between the Trump presidential campaign and Russia. This needs to be investigated by a bipartisan commission. So we're talking about, we know there's been interference, as Hillary Clinton said the other day, it's clear that there were Americans who helped the Russians who, who tapped into this data weaponize it. We need to find out the full story. And let's be clear, a special counsel's job is to investigate violations of law, including criminal violations. It's not Robert Mueller's job to look at the full whole picture. We need the whole picture. Also, also, let's be clear, he could be fired at any time. We need a commission that can work on its own that's independent of the political process. Okay, and let's talk about the congressional committees. I don't know about you, but they're not working fast enough for my taste. No way. And we still have Nunes, who supposedly recused himself from the House Intelligence Committee, trying to stir up nonsense and divert the attention of the people because he's still chair of that committee. He's supposed to be recused from that investigation. We also have what promised us to be a blockbuster testimony next Thursday with the former FBI Director James Comey, who was fired by the president. But what's going on behind the scenes? It's quite possible that the president is going to try to use some fake executive privilege to bar him from testifying. It's been, that's unacceptable. He already talked about their conversations, but could it work? Maybe. This is exactly why, alongside of the criminal investigation and alongside of the partisan, politically infused congressional committees, we need a truth committee. The March for Truth number one demand is the independent bipartisan commission. We need to win on this. We need to get this. We will get this. And if it requires flipping the Congress blue in 2018, we will do it. We will get it. I promise. The second, or I always say that, but we'll see. The second is we want transparency of this commission. Just to reiterate, open hearings is the tradition that are televised, followed by a footnoted 
publicly released report that is here for our nation's history. We have had the most bizarre things happen. We don't trust whether this is a legitimate president. We need to find out what exactly this president and his campaign did and why they did and what they're continuing to do to appease Russia. We're very suspicious, not just about the president, but his son-in-law Kushner. Kushner and Kremlin cannot get their story straight about these bank meetings, about these so-called back channels. It's not a back channel. When, this, when someone on the Trump campaign, when someone who is part of the Trump administration, when someone who is the, the, the president's son-in-law goes to a meeting in the president's private office, a private tower, and meets with the ambassador of Russia to try to come up with a way to go into the Russian embassy, to use Russian embassy equipment, to communicate with Moscow. That's not a back channel. That sounds like treason to me. Okay, we're on three. Come on, you know I've got to say this. in office. 
And the thing is, there may be a question about whether the indictment can happen or whether the prosecution can happen, whether those are two different things. That doesn't matter. There are others who were involved in this obstruction. And meanwhile, there is a mechanism called impeachment. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to talk about that. I'm going to let my friend, John Bonifaz, uh, bring that topic up. But where I will go now for one moment before I return to in, uh, Nixon and impeachment is this. Yeah, Russia, Trump collusion is a problem. Yes. Trump is a problem. And he will be gone one day. He will leave office. So what is our bigger vision? We know we want truth, and we know we're against corruption. But sometimes I like to say, what is our progressive vision? And I just want to share with you the five, six things that I think are part of that vision. First, shared prosperity and a living wage for all. Equal treatment, dignity, and justice for all. Yeah. Affordable, comprehensive health care through Medicare for all. This is not too much to ask for. Debt free, affordable, higher education. Five, banking that is not too big to fail. We 
need another investigation. An impeachment investigation. I am the co-founder and president of Free Speech for People. And on the, on the day of the inauguration, joined with Roots Action, we launched ImpeachDonaldTrumpNow.org. We launched that. We launched that on the day of the inauguration because the moment the president took the oath of office, he was in violation of the two anti-corruption provisions of the Constitution, the Foreign Corruption Clause, otherwise known as the Foreign Emoluments Clause, and the Domestic Corruption Clause, otherwise known as the Domestic Emoluments Clause. Now let's be clear here. This president, prior to taking the oath of office, was repeatedly warned, repeatedly warned that he needed to fully divest from his business interests in order to comply with those two anti-corruption provisions of the Constitution. He was warned by the former Chief Ethics Counsel for President George W. Bush, Richard Painter. He was warned by the former Chief Ethics Counsel for President Obama, Norm Eisen. He was warned by the most prominent constitutional law professor in the country, Lawrence Tribe of Harvard Law School. And he was warned by Walter Schaub, the director of the nonpartisan Office of Government Ethics of the United States government. He was warned. And what did he do? He carted out his bankruptcy lawyer on January 11th, nine days before taking the oath of office, and he announced that he was going to transfer, transfer the operational control of the Trump Organization, his company, to his two eldest sons. And, there, and therefore, and therefore, he said he would be in compliance with the Constitution. The test, the test here is not whether you've transferred operational control. The test is whether you have ownership interests in your company. And for the past several decades, every president has divested fully from his business interests in order to comply with these two anti-corruption provisions of the Constitution. Not this president. He's openly defying the law. He's openly engaged in conflicts of interest all across the world. He has 111 business interests in 25 different countries, taking payments, illegal payments, from foreign governments <laughs> under the Foreign Emoluments Clause. And under the Domestic Emoluments Clause, he takes tax subsidies and tax breaks illegally in violation of that clause from state governments and from the federal government other than his federal salary. This is a president who must be held accountable for his violations of the Constitution. Now, if that weren't enough, if that weren't enough to justify an impeachment investigation, we now know that this president engaged in directly interfering and obstructing with a criminal investigation that would incriminate potentially himself and his associates. He has fired the FBI director, James Comey, and he has openly stated that he did so to stop that criminal investigation. That is obstruction of justice. That is a high crime. That is an impeachable offense. And as Jennifer, as Jennifer made clear, the first charge under the Articles of Impeachment passed by the United States House Judiciary Committee 28 to 10 in 1974, bipartisan vote against Richard Nixon. The first charge was obstruction of justice. So when we hear, when we hear our elected officials say, we need to get the facts out, we can't move too quickly on impeachment. What they're really saying is, we need to get other facts out. Because we have these facts. We have the facts that he's violating the Foreign Corruption Clause. We have the facts that he's violating the Domestic Corruption Clause. We have the facts that he's obstructing justice. This president needs to face an impeachment investigation now. Now, there were plenty of people who said when we launched this campaign, it's too soon. It's not going to go anywhere. Well, I'm happy to tell you that today, as of this morning, more than 1.1 million Americans across the country have signed up at ImpeachDonaldTrumpNow.org, and they're growing every day. And 10 communities, including Amherst, Pelham, Leverett, Cambridge, Massachusetts,
Massachusetts and Brookline, as well as Los Angeles, Richmond, Berkeley, Alameda, and Charlotte, Vermont, have all joined in calling on Congress to take this action. And you know what? For everybody here who lives in Northampton, Northampton ought to be next. We need to be calling on Congress to take this action. This is not just about Donald Trump. This is about us. What are we as a nation? Who are we as a people? The people are rising. We are rising to defend our Constitution. We are rising to defend our democracy. We are rising for that bedrock principle that no one is above the law, not even the President of the United States. Right. Isha Williams is the editor of the Valley Post, a local news website for the Northampton area. Audio versions of Valley Post articles air on WXOJ. More, va more information is at valleypost.org. Isha is the author of Grassroots Journalism. He won the Vermont Press Association Award for Best in Investigative Journalist. He covered the Pioneer Valley as a staff reporter for NPR station WAMC and earned his master's degree in history at UMass Amherst. Now, here's Isha. Thank you, Debbie, for organizing this event. Thank you all for coming out. Uh, this kind of march and rally gives me a lot of hope in a dark time. You know, Republicans control Congress. I, I'm not a lawyer like I believe the previous two speakers were. Louder. Louder. Talking to the mic. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Republicans control Congress. I, I believe they would be the ones who'd have to impeach Trump. It seems like, I hope that happens. It seems like that would be a long shot. I'm going to kind of talk about another way that I believe we could achieve what we're looking for, which is to defeat Trump's goals. Trump wants to cut taxes on rich people like himself, cut programs to help poor people, do away with our efforts to stop climate change, increase military spending at a time when the U.S., with 5% of the world's population, spends as much on the military as the rest of the world combined. So the question is, how do we stop Trump from achieving those goals? I believe we start locally, we look at history. Right here in the valley, just a couple of years ago, a giant corporation named Kinder Morgan from Texas wanted to build a 31-inch diameter pipeline to carry fracked gas from near Albany, New York, to near Boston, right through the valley. And people here, or anyone here was involved in the struggle, maybe attended the marches yeah. that defeated that Woo. pipeline? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. In Springfield, Massachusetts, giant multi-billion dollar banks are trying to evict low-income people from their homes. There's a group called Springfield No One Leaves that has used direct action, Nonviolent civil disobedience. I was there on a day when 12 people were arrested there for peacefully blocking Bank of America in downtown Springfield. And they have succeeded in blocking these multi-billion dollar banks from evicting low-income people, mostly people of color, from their homes in Springfield. There's a company called Entergy Corporation out of Louisiana, which owns the Vermont Yankee nuclear power plant. It's three miles from Massachusetts, right on the bank of the Connecticut River. They want, Entergy wanted to keep Vermont Yankee running for another 20 years from 2012 till 2032. The plant was opened in 1972. The reason that that multi-billion dollar corporation from Louisiana failed to achieve their goal is because of people marching like you all are marching today, people doing civil disobedience. In 2012, we had 137 people arrested for nonviolent civil disobedience outside the Entergy office in Brattleboro. So those are a couple of local examples from recent years. If you pull back 
nationally. The labor movement, people marching, striking, that's what brought us the weekend. Our next speaker is Joe Comerford. She's the national director for Move On, and also Move On is a national sponsor for the March to Truth today. Let's give a huge hand for Debbie and this organizing. in New York, in Boston, in Washington, D.C. There are thousands of people on the street. As Debbie said, 130 locations, likely more, because the, the organic energy is rising today, and like it rose during the Women's March and the Science March. And that's one of the two stories that I'd like to tell you, very quick stories, since Election Day. The first story is this, the story of people power, the story of resistance. As Jennifer said, we didn't think we'd get a special counsel, but we got Mueller. He's not perfect, but he's in office, and people are holding him accountable. And as Jennifer said, Nunes was recused. He had to recuse himself. Now, that didn't happen out of the kindness of his heart, the chair of the Ethics Committee. That happened because people mobilized. They showed up in his office. They drove hundreds of thousands of petition signatures, tens of thousands of calls. They launched lawsuits and ethics complaints, and that drove Nunes to recuse himself. Similarly, Sessions, who lied under oath, our attorney general, it's horrific, lied under oath. He didn't recuse himself from the Russia investigation because he wanted to, because he thought it was the right thing to do. Clearly, that wasn't so. He recused himself because people protested in Washington, D.C., outside his office for days and days and days, driving shameful, shameful, shameful accounts from people about his lies into the public media and people drove calls and letters and petitions similarly and Sessions was forced to, to back down. Similarly, Steve Bannon, millions of petition signatures delivered on the Hill to congressional leaders demanding that Steve Bannon not be a national special advisor to Trump. But then we really kicked it up a notch when he was appointed to the National Security Council. And we said, no, that's a bridge too far. That's a line we won't cross. And there was massive, massive civil unrest in Washington. And that and other factors drove Steve Bannon off the National Security Council. So if we think that we will have no impact on Trump, we are wrong. And since you all prove that, you are, are living the faith of the people-powered resistance. And of course, there's another story. And there's the story of the constant attack on health care. But of course, that's the bridge story, right? Because that was forestalled. People, people held back the attack on health care thus far, even though we're not done yet, friends, and I know many of you are mobilizing. And there's the, also the shameful story of the Paris Accord and the Muslim ban and the bombing of Syria, all of which, for me at least personally, up the urgency of this moment to hold Trump and his, his cadre of advisors and corrupt individuals accountable. So friends, I want to just say that tomorrow, in Washington, there will be continued unrest. And then on Tuesday, we together move on and indivisible and allies across the country are gathering in Washington on the eve of the Comey testimony, which is right now scheduled for Thursday, to demand that James Comey be able to speak and speak fully, that Trump not, not absolutely not be able to or allowed to invoke a ridiculous executive privilege. And there are lawsuits being filed today, tomorrow, and the next day to undermine this attempt by Donald Trump to squash James Comey. And that's what it's gonna take from all of us. All of us, it's going to take this kind of dogged resistance, this faith that people power will prevail. And it's gonna take it from you, and I'm so grateful to these organizers, and it's gonna take it from national organizations across the country. And I just will close by saying, for me, that's the hope of this moment. Yeah. The hope of this moment is there's the Pioneer Valley Resist Coalition Thank that's you. risen up from the ground with indivisible and grassroots organizations that's inspiring people across the, the Commonwealth to mobilize similarly. And in fact, 
I, and you're probably following this, the kind of resistance that's happening in Massachusetts is happening in every single state in the nation. Unprecedented people taking action in ever more creative ways. And so I'll leave you with just saying that for me, for me, it's about my kids, and it's about faith, and it's about belief in our nation. It's about the fact that what brought Donald Trump into office is really the thing that we have to look at together. Donald Trump isn't necessarily causing the problems of today and the way that we're targeting him. He's a result of a nation that needs to be built by us and our allies in the most diverse and progressive stance possible from the ground up after we after we kick him and his cadre out of the White House and out of Congress. Thank you. Our next speaker is Marty Nathan. Marty is a family physician, mother, grandmother, writer, and organizer around climate justice, immigrant rights, and peace. She is on the steering committee of the Climate Action Now, a member of Two Degrees, and director of the Cliniquita. Marty works at Bay State Brightwood Health Center in Springfield. Um, I, this is what happens when you put your speech in your backpack with a leaky water bottle. <laughs> I want, really want to thank Indivisible NoHo and move on for organizing this March for Truth and take a deep bow to the new energetic organizers who have jumped into the fray out of anger at the sexist, racist, homophobic, anti-democratic, xenophobic, militarist, corporatist, anti-immigrant, and anti-environmental character of this regime. Yeah. Your insightful daring at recognizing that the grassroots is the bottom line barrier to the suffering that this administration would like to inflict on all of us deserves our gratitude. This march is focused on ending the lies that protect the Trump and friends corporate cabal. It is increasingly clear that these American oligarchs working hand in hand with Russian oligarchs to gain po power are now using our government's power, our power, to expand their riches. They have be, been making deals to bail out their risky investments by laundering ill-gotten Russian gains. They have lied to their supporters, to the press, and before Congress. We must fight to make a, a real investigation into their tawdry affair. One that ultimately, I don't doubt, will be found to be illegal. There knows, there's no question it's immoral. Right. The question is, will they be found guilty of the crimes they seem to have committed, lose their jobs through impeachment, and be sent to jail? Yeah. How will that happen? By us fighting hard to make it happen. But their lies are only momentarily superseded by those of another gaggle of super rich. I bring this up because if after securing the truth, we impeach Trump, we are stuck with Mike Pence. Right. Who is the golden boy of the Koch brothers gang. Right. These are the funders of the Tea Party and are rock bottom committed to the ide ideology of fossil fuel transcendence because they make their money at that way. Union busting, stealing from the poor, corporate control of government, and all the sins of the religious right wing. 
If you want to see how ugly they are, take a look at North Carolina, where I spent many years, where they cre created a testing ground for eliminating democracy and the social safety net. Right. The Koch gang is not at one with Trump, but are key players, as you know, in their administration, and certainly promise no better than Trump if we get rid of the present oligarch in chief. Winning this battle is by no means winning the war. We must work to elect a truly progressive Congress and ultimately executive that serve us all. I have got to focus now on all the other lies, or just some of them, actually. They're such a, they're, they're, it's, it's the swamp, uh, that undergird the policies of this administration. Russia is just the entrance ramp to a highway of mendacity to support ugly, mean, and greedy policies. Just a few immigrants are criminals and sponging off the system. No, they are less likely to commit real crime than our citizens and pay more taxes per dollar earned than do, than do citizens. Even though they do the hardest, most dangerous jobs without which we would not have food on our table, they are cut off from health care, food stamps, welfare, and housing assistance. <laughs> Quotes, voter fraud is a significant problem. Bullshit. No. Horse hockey? <laughs> That's good. I got like it. To the contrary, voter suppression prevented thousands from casting their ballot last year and may have won Trump the election. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Medicaid and food stamp recipients are fraudsters in order to cut the budget. That is untrue from the official research, but I am witness day in, day out at Brightwood Healthcare to hundred, hundreds of hungry and sick people seeking care, unable to even pay the $1.25 to take a bus. Repressive Saudi Arabia is making prog progress on women's rights. Did you all hear that? <laughs> and deserves $110 billion arms deal for using, for bombing, starving, and cholera ridden ch civilians in Yemen. No, 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 no. How many ways can we parse the lies there? For most of us, though, this week, the biggest lie is the web of falsehood spun to get out of the Paris Climate Agreement. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's too costly a burden. Yeah? For decades, the United States industry has used our common atmosphere that we breathe and live in as its personal dumping ground. Avoiding trillions in externalized costs, disease, the violence of war, and now the chaos of climate change so that the taxpayer subsidized fossil fuel industry can reap almost uncountable profits. The burden? Cuts in those profits and payments to the victims of the climate catastrophe in the global south to help them adapt and develop using renewable energy. It costs U.S. jobs, the Paris Climate Agreement. Pants on fire. <laughs> 400,000 re renewable energy jobs versus only 60,000 in coal. Right. And the coal jobs were lost not for the environment, but to technology and cheap fracked gas. Right. AFL-CIO uh, President Richard Trumka, who I think knows a little bit more about labor than does Donald Trump, <laughs> blasted Trump's decision knowing that overall this move was a true loser. 
for American labor. In a similar vein, I was elected to represent the citizens of Pittsburgh, not Paris. <laughs> then represent them. The mayor of Pittsburgh has stated that he and his city support the climate agreement. <laughs> all of this is on top of the biggest underlying lie of all, the denial or dismissal of the threat of climate catastrophe. Right. Pretty stupid. We are facing probably the greatest danger in the history of the human species. 2016 was the hottest year on record, surpassing the previous record holder, 2015. There is already enough greenhouse gas, mainly carbon dioxide and methane, in the atmosphere to raise temperatures one and a half degrees centigrade, ushering in some of the independent feedback loops that create runaway global warming. We've lost the reflective cap capacity of ice. We are filling the carbon sink in the ocean. We are increasing water vapor. It's self a greenhouse gas. And finally, we are beginning to melt the tundra to release massive amounts of methane into the air that has been trapped there in the tundra for eons. In fact, our window of opportunity for action to cut emissions and prevent runaway climate change is very narrow. We needed to start yesterday to eliminate the burning of coal, oil, and gas and convert to an economy based on conservation and renewable energy. Yeah. Trump and Koch and crowd lie, lie, and then lie again to cover their lies. And the lies cost lives and perhaps the future of our planet. Their lies bring not just wars, deportation, homelessness, and hunger, but rising seas, species extinction, droughts, megastorms, and massive heat waves. Our job is to build, from now on, a giant movement dedicated to truth, respect, justice, and sustainability, and peace. It must reach across cultural, race, class, and gender barriers. It must be wiser than any movement before us. Why? Because the stakes are so perilously high. We per pursue truth in order to have a future. The next speaker is uh, Don Ogden. He's the producer and co-host of the Enviro Show on Valley Free Radio and founder of Poets Against the Pipeline. Thanks for coming out on some short notice. All right, thanks, Marty. By the way, that was excellent. So a little history. The last real king we had was King George. He was often called the Mad King. There's imaginary Mad Kings, Game of Thrones, and this one. Oh, get him. Thank you. The Mad King will have us sing his remove and everything. He had done under the sun. The mad king caused such pain and laughter vain. His sorry reign did not remain enough to gain any real place in history or her story anywhere really except tales told around campfires burning late into the night. Remember the mad king? That effing nasty thing and those who gave him space that crazy mad race over the cliff no more at last into your face. Remember the Mad King? What a sad disgrace. Onward! 
Um, so there's a few tables around here, so I just wanted the people that are manning them to come up and say a few words about the organizations. Uh, Vicki Elson and Kanari Horton, um, they're from Represent Us. Hi. What a terrific bunch of speakers we had today, huh? Yeah. Thank you all for being here. For, thank you for caring so much about the world. So uh, how many people here think that uh, money and politics is a great combination? <laughs> yeah, well, we're here to work on that. Uh, we're with Represent Us, which is a national grassroots volunteer-run organization. We are nonpartisan. Uh, which means I can talk to my mom about it. And um, we are, uh, we just passed our 50th, 50th anti-corruption resolution nationwide. We have them in cities and states, uh, all well, one state, uh, across the country, and we're working on a whole lot more for 2018 and 2020. So if you want to be part of seeing legislation that creates more transparency, creates better rules about who can contribute and how much and how it can be spent, and um, closing the revolving door between being a lobbyist and being a politician. A lot of people have the same job. They just cycle from one to the other. Um, you know, if you're interested in cleaning that up, and if you believe that we can't fix anything until we fix our broken elections, then uh, if you have room in your life for one more really wonderful thing to do with really wonderful people, join us. Um, I have over here a petition you can sign, that's easy. And uh, also we're having an introductory meeting on June um, 17th at Lilly Library in Florence. You're all welcome to come. Uh, Canard makes fantastic <laughs> treats every time we have a meeting. It's wonderful, so it's worth coming just for that. Um, and uh, that, but I think that's all I want to say. Yeah, thank you everybody for doing this. These are a lot of great organizations, a lot of great people. Everyone, I didn't really expect to speak, so I'll be kind of brief with this. Um, so when I was looking at the election, um, one of the things that was going through my mind a lot was how did we get here? Um, and, and there's a lot of reasons how we got here, but, but one of the, the interesting things is that most people in the primaries and in the general election did not vote for Donald Trump. Right. So the reason that he was able to win had at least part to do with the fact that we have a, a system that doesn't require most people to vote for you in order to win. Amanda we Constitution. have what's called a, a first past the post system where you can win if you have the most votes in a state even if you don't have the majority of votes. So if you have third parties, you have independents coming in, this can create all these problems. We have a proposed solution at Voter Choice Massachusetts called Ranked Choice Voting, which would allow you, instead of just picking one candidate, to actually rank your candidates in order of preference. It allows, it completely eliminates the possibility of spoiler elections. It forces candidates to be more honest and more um, civil with one another instead of just attacking each other all the time. And it allows people to really express their true preferences and not just feel like they have to vote for somebody in order to stop somebody else from winning. Yeah, right. So if any of those things sound like things that you might be interested in, we've got a table over there, we've got literature, we've got a sign-up sheet because we're trying to build a grassroots space strong enough to actually get this in Massachusetts soon. So cool. come check us out and say hi and we'll, we'll give you all the information if you have any questions.